Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Mackie here. Welcome to Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, the continuation of our 100% walkthrough series. This is Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, and in this video I'll show you how to grab 105% on your save file, and I'll be showing you all 45 of the gems available, not including the DLC level which has an additional 2 gems. Now Crash Bandicoot 3, honestly not my favorite of the 3 games. There are a lot of new mechanics and a lot of familiar mechanics. You'll be able to jump, spin, crouch, press Y for inventory if you so desire. As you uh, beat bosses, you'll unlock new rewards that allow you to kind of either, you know, double jump or hurricane spin or run faster and whatnot. Additionally, you'll have to do a whole bunch of time trials if you do want 105%. You will need at least 42 of the gems in order to get the achievement or trophy. You'll also need to grab all of the gems in the bonus levels. So if you want to make sure you grab everything along the way, I'll be making sure to point everything out as we play. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the, uh, you know, the walkthrough. I will be commenting from level to level, although I won't be commenting through the entire two-hour video. All right, so the first level is Toad Village. A pretty straightforward level all of the boxes are pretty obvious although there is a bonus stage with an additional seven boxes we'll need to make sure to grab in crash bandicoot 3 you will grab a box you will grab a gem at the end of a level for grabbing all of the boxes there will also be additional gems that are available in death roots or available through gem roots and things like that i'll point them all out individually as we play though The second level is an underwater level called Under Pressure. We'll grab the gem for grabbing all of the boxes. This level is pretty straightforward. The only thing you'll need to keep in mind is that there will be some boxes inside of the coral. And you'll need to use the kind of ship in order to shoot it down. Grab all 92 boxes. You'll get a gem at the end. You know, watch out for any enemies like sharks or mines or pufferfish. Thank you. 
Next, we have Orient Express, which will be a Coco only level. In Crash 1, we rode a Hog. In Crash 2, we rode a Polar Bear. And in Crash 3, we ride a Tiger. So we'll grab the gem on this level for collecting all of the boxes. Feel free to, you know, jump off the map if you miss a box and be brought back to your previous checkpoint. There is the ability to hold B to run faster. However, for this level, I probably wouldn't recommend it as it actually makes it harder to grab all the boxes along the way. Next, we have Boneyard, which is one of those levels where you kind of run into or away from the screen and you get chased by something. We had giant boulders in Crash 1, for example, as and even in Crash 2. Now, for this, we're going to grab the crystal, obviously, for completing the level, and we're going to grab the one gem available here for grabbing all 66 of the boxes. Feel free to use the checkpoints as much as you need. Take your time if you need it and uh, you know, learn the mechanics of these levels. There's grass you can cut down by spinning um, and whatnot. So overall, the level's pretty easy. Grab the boxes, you get the gem.
Next, we have Making Waves, which is a Skidoo or Jet Ski level. Jet Ski levels are only playable with uh, Coco. And for the gem here, all we need to do is make sure to grab all of the boxes along the way. We'll also grab a crystal as we complete the level. Make sure you grab the crystals as you'll need them to fight the bosses. And uh, yeah, this one's actually pretty simple, although some of the Jet Ski or Skidoo levels get a little bit more difficult than others. I recommend grabbing and making sure you use the most out of the Aku Aku masks and, you know, making sure you get the most out of your checkpoints as well. They have a lot of timing and precision and the controls aren't too solid. So you might have a couple, uh, you know, problems here and there, but once you get used to it, it's really not too bad. After grabbing crystals from the first five levels, we're ready for our first boss, which is Tiny Tiger. Overall, he's a pretty easy boss. He'll chase you around the Col Colosseum here, and after a couple of jumps, he'll try to smash the ground, but he'll stun himself, and you can hit him. From there, you just kind of want to stay in the middle and spin away any of the lions that are running out, and you shouldn't have too many problems. Uh, repeat the process until he dies. At the end, you will also grab a kind of power-up, which allows you to body slam a little bit harder. The sixth level is called G Wiz. In this level, we can grab a clear crystal for grabbing all 100 of the boxes. Another pretty straightforward level. There is a bonus stage which, which you will need to complete. And uh, now that we have the body slam, we can also get through metal boxes. Otherwise, pretty straightforward. Crash 3 in general is an easier game in my opinion than Crash 2 or even Crash 1, for example. Generally, you'll be able to make your way through the levels pretty easily, occasionally stopping at a checkpoint and figuring it out. And in this level's case, that's that doesn't take too long. The game does get a little bit harder, though. Uh, there's a couple hard levels at the end, um, so you'll definitely want to stay for those, though.
Next, we have Hang'em High, which has a clear gem and a yellow gem available. However, the yellow gem is not attainable until much, much later on in the game. So all we can go for is the clear gem, which is for collecting all of the boxes. There is a bonus stage you will need to complete. There's also some new enemy types you might notice, like the guy who waves the sword blindly. You'll have to attack him from behind or jump over him. There's a guy that rides a carpet. You'll need to spin him away. There's some scorpions you'll need to either time or spin away as well. There's a monkey who carries vases you can slide into. There's also a guy who throws um, a knife, and you'll need to make sure to jump over that and then jump on his head. Uh, there's also bouncy pads, and like I said earlier, there's a uh, there's a bonus. There's a hidden box I just passed as well, but there's um, a hidden bonus level. Or, it's not that hidden. It's, it's a bonus level you will need to complete in order to grab all of the boxes and get the gem at the end. Next, we have Hog Ride, which is a motorcycle level that only Crash can complete. Now, you will get the crystal for getting first place, and then you'll get the gem for grabbing all of the boxes. Now, you can do this separately, or you can do this in the same run. I will be showing you how to grab all the boxes while also getting first place. A really important thing about this is the speed boost at the very beginning. And to do that, you'll need to not press the gas until both of the red lights are on, but the green light is not on yet. So you should apply gas to your car right before the green light turns on, and this will allow you to get a speed boost from the very beginning. Otherwise, you have to focus on grabbing all 13 of the boxes during the run, and then make sure you can get into first place to grab both the crystal and the gem in one run. Obviously, you want to focus on the boost pads, you want to make sure you don't crash, and, and obviously all that stuff. Next, we have the level Tomb Time, but all we have to do is grab the purple crystal in order to proceed through the game. We will not be grabbing any of the gems until much later on in the game, so again, we're going to do Tomb Time just to grab the crystal.
Last but not least on this platform, the 10th level available is called Midnight Run, another Coco Tiger level. And for this one, again, we're just going to grab all the boxes along the way to get the gem at the end. There are a couple of trickier jumps in this one than in the other one. For example, we'll have to jump over a couple of launch pads or around a launch pad. There's a lot of enemies that get in the way and we will actually need to use that speed boost run that I spoke about a little bit earlier for some of the trickier boxes that are kind of above the play area. Uh, for this one, again, feel free to use as many checkpoints as you need until you can get to the end. If you do miss a box, it's easier to kind of jump off instead of restart the whole level. This is the trickiest jump. You want to jump late and apply maybe just a tiny bit of boost right before the jump, but don't hold the boost throughout the jump. Otherwise, another level uh, where we just grab all the boxes, which for the most part are pretty obvious. There's a couple trickier ones that are harder to get, but they should be pretty obvious to you as a player. After getting power crystals number 6 through 10, we are now ready for the Dingadile uh, boss battle. For this one, all we want to do is run away from the fireballs. And after the fireball phase, the boss will try to shoot us with a flamethrower, which we need to slowly dodge to the side. This will slowly start to destroy the ice around him. And when we can actually melee him, we want to just jump into him and spin. You basically do this for three phases. There's a little bit of timing involved to make sure you don't get hit by the fireball. But I would essentially recommend just continually running counterclockwise or clockwise and making sure to dodge whenever appropriate. The power up you do unlock after this boss battle, by the way, is the double jump, which will be essential for completing a lot of the levels from here on out. Next, we have level 11, Dino Might, and for this level, we're only going to run through as quickly as possible in order to grab the crystal so we can make progress through the game. We'll need to come back to this level once we have the yellow gem acquired, as well as a couple more of the uh, power-ups. So we're going to come and do this level. This is actually going to be one of the last levels we play uh, to complete the game.
Level number 12 is Deep Trouble. We can grab both of the gems, and this is also our first color gem. We'll be able to grab the red gem. So for the red gem, we'll need to grab all of the boxes in the level, and to do that, there's a very kind of specific thing we'll need to do. Pretty late in the level, we will need to go up and through an optional path, where at the end of the optional path, we can shoot a metal box that'll spawn a new box that we can now destroy. From there, we'll need to backtrack to where we were previously, and then complete the level as normal, instead of escaping from the kind of optional path exit. It'll all make sense, essentially just follow the video, but there are two ways to finish this level. You can finish with option A or B, and that'll kind of give you the normal gem, but the idea for this one is to do both of the optional paths, and you'll be able to grab the red gem and the clear gem at the same time uh, in this level. Now that we have the red gem from the previous level, Deep Trouble, we can return to the fourth level in the game called Boneyard and get the other gem in this level for completing the red gem optional path.
Next, we have the 13th level called High Time. We can grab the crystal as well as the clear gem for grabbing all of the boxes as well as the purple gem for completing the death route. Now, in order to get the death route, you need to get to that part of the level without dying. So make sure that if you do die, you kind of restart the whole level. You can't use the checkpoint system really um, for death routes or else the platform disappears. And at the end of the death route, when you do grab the purple gem, you can either complete the level and then redo the level to get all the boxes, or you can just jump off the edge and you'll be respawned to a checkpoint before the death route, and then you can just complete the level and do both of them at the same time. So this is one of those things where if you have enough skill and you kind of know what you're doing, you can kind of cheat it a little bit and grab both of the gems in one play, or again, you can split it up into two plays if you prefer that.
Now that we have the purple gem from the previous level, we can go back to level 9, Tomb Time, and we can grab both of the gems. One of them is going to be for completing the optional purple path, and one of them is going to be for getting all of the boxes. Now, there is a little bit of checkpoint manipulation here going on. You'll see that I kind of proceed through one path um, and skip a checkpoint on purpose. And then you'll notice I come back from the same path and then go the other direction where there was a fork in the road before. And then I complete that part and then I kind of die on purpose in order to go back to the checkpoint. It's not as complicated as it seems, although you do need to do like a significant portion of the level uh, and then backtrack it and kind of use the checkpoint system to your advantage. So as long as you're kind of paying attention to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, again, I'm going to be skipping a checkpoint on purpose, then activating it, then dying on purpose to go back to that checkpoint so I can grab all of the boxes in one play. This will also allow me to... Um, this will also allow me to grab both of the gems in one play, like I said. So, uh, yeah, that's how you can grab both of the gems in Tomb Time.
Next up, another motorcycle level. This one's level 14, Road Crash. You need to be crash. Again, the boost tip is to apply gas right before the light turns green. Um, and in order to earn the crystal for the level, you will need to get first place. In order to earn the gem for the level, you'll need to grab all of the boxes. You can do those two things separately, or you can do those two things at the same time as I will be doing on screen. Totally up to you. Level number 15 is double header. We can grab the gem on our first play of the level, making sure to grab all of the boxes and, you know, trying to minimize our deaths just so we can try to keep some lives for later. Although that part's kind of optional. Uh, you'll want to grab the masks whenever you can, and I would recommend trying to keep them on you. You don't need to, but it does make the end of the level a little bit easier. There will be a small bonus path we'll need to obviously grab and uh, on our way to our next gem at the end of the level.
The third boss is Dr. Entropy. This boss is not too bad in my opinion. What he does is he'll spawn some platforms directly in front of you. Then you'll dodge a couple of his missiles and a couple of his like lasers. And then he will alter the path in front of you to another random path. I don't think there's any pattern here. But essentially after he changes his path, you run up to him, spin move, and then wait. He will change locations. And then you rinse and repeat this for three phases. Uh, nothing's particularly difficult, but there is a bullet that tracks you. I would recommend just uh, sliding out of the way of that. And at the end of this boss battle, make sure you read up on the ability that you do gain from him. So you'll gain the ability to do a hurricane spin, which is very useful for saving yourself in bad jumps or clearing large gaps um, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to clear. Now we're going to skip level 16 for a little bit and then go straight to level 17, which is called Bye Bye Blimps. We get the crystal for completing the level, for shooting down all seven blimps, and we get the gem for destroying all of the floating boxes. We can either shoot the boxes to destroy them or shoot the balloons to make the boxes drop and then they'll get automatically destroyed with a little bit of a delay. Now you will be getting shot quite a bit by a lot of the bo uh, uh, you know the other bombers or whatever. And my advice for this would be to just spin, just tap the A button and you'll do barrel rolls and they'll basically never hit you. You'll see me start doing that in a little bit here. Additionally, some of the boxes we do shoot provide us with extra health, but once you just just tap A to do barrel rolls and they can basically never hit you. Moving on to level number 18, Tell No Tales. There is a clear gem for grabbing all of the boxes. This is another Coco Jet Ski level. It is pretty difficult in my opinion. There's a couple tricky sections. Although overall, there's no like crazy hidden boxes or anything you'll need to worry about. For the most part, most of them are obvious, although some of them are in optional areas of the level. Take your time, make sure you grab checkpoints that are uh, available to you, and practice makes perfect for this one.
Next up, we have Future Frenzy level number 19. We are, however, unable to grab either of the gems for this level until much later. So all we're going to do uh, the first time we play it is get through as fast as possible in order to earn the purple crystal just so we can make progress through the game. There's nothing crazy new about this level or anything you haven't seen before. You'll obviously need some double jumps, some slides. It's mostly just platforming just to get through it for the first time though. Next up, we have the level Tomb Waiter, and this is level 20. We can grab two gems, a clear gem and a blue gem on our first play. In order to grab the clear gem, we'll obviously have to grab all 88 of the boxes along the way. The blue gem in this level is rewarded for completing a death route. So in order to do the death route, you need to obviously get all the way to the death route without dying. That will grab us, uh, the, you know, the platform will be available to us if we get there without dying. And we'll also need to grab everything along the way. Now, in order to do both of them at the same time, I did grab the blue gem and then jump off the edge in order to respawn at the checkpoint. Uh, if you want, you can do it in two separate plays as well, though. You can try to do the death route and then go um, try to do the boxes, but I think you have to actually do both of them at the same time. There's also a little bit of a small trick inside of the bonus stage. You can die inside of a bonus stage and you still get the death route, though. Keep that in mind. Get all 25 of the boxes or leave the last couple. You'll be fine. And, uh, yeah, again, we're going to be making sure to grab the death route. At the end of the death route, we have a blue gem. If we grab the checkpoint before the death route, we should be able to jump off the edge and complete the level with all of the boxes in order to get both gems in one play, although the level is pretty long if you do it like that.
Alright, now that we have the blue gem from level 20, we can do level 16 Sphinxinator and grab both of the clear gems. Before I talk about that, there's a couple things I do want to point out. Number one, at the very beginning here, you can go to the back and then take the left path and grab five lives. After that, you can quit out, save, load the game, and repeat this process over and over to farm up to 99 lives for an achievement. Additionally, if you're playing as Coco, now that we have the hurricane spin, which is done by mashing X, we can also get five kills with Coco's Hurricane Spin, and that'll also unlock an achievement or trophy for us, which we wouldn't have been able to get before this level. Now, the clear gems. There are two clear gems available to us. One is obviously for grabbing all of the boxes along the way. The other is for completing the optional blue gem path, which should now newly be opened. We'll need to also grab that. Now, you can do these two things separately, However, I'll be doing them in the same run. So what you'll notice me do is after completing the blue path and grabbing that gem at the end, I'll jump off the ledge on purpose in order to come back to this checkpoint right here. And that'll allow me to do both of the gems in one long playthrough of the level instead of separating it into two.
All right, Dr. N. Jin. This one is incredibly easy. I take a ton of damage, but never really get, um, you know, anywhere near dying. Basically, all you want to do is move around the screen, dodge any bullets coming at you whenever appropriate. And whenever any yellow parts show up on the boss, you want to shoot them. So he has like two little cannon packs on his back, two machine guns on his sides, and a big yellow circle right in the middle of his body. That'll take down basically all of his health, and then there's like a second phase and whatnot. Uh, super easy boss fight. If you want to take no damage, it might be a little bit harder. But um, honestly, you can take so much damage and really never, uh, you know, there's never any, like, danger in dying. After the boss battle, we're going to skip level 21 for a little bit and instead go to level 22, Orange Asphalt. This is another bike, uh, motorbike uh, level. Again, we'll want to do the speed boost by tapping the gas right before the light turns green. And in order to earn the crystal, we need to get first place. In order to earn the gem, we'll need to get all of the boxes. You can do those in separate runs or you can do them in the same run as I'm showing on screen. And uh, this level is actually pretty fun in my opinion. It's a little bit more challenging than the other ones, a little bit longer, uh, but overall, uh, I enjoyed it actually. Next, we have Flaming Passion, level number 29. We can grab a clear gem for grabbing all the boxes, obviously. And there's also a green gem available to us for doing a death route. Now, because it's a death route, obviously, um, I, we have to get to that area without dying. I just like to repeat myself, just in case you guys didn't watch earlier parts of the video. So, we gotta get to the death route without dying. Um, and before we go to the death route, I would recommend just grabbing a couple boxes ahead of it so that we don't have to backtrack at all and instead of uh, jumping off like we often do at the end of a death route we're actually going to ride to the end of it 
and then we'll be able to still grab all the boxes without having to really use the checkpoint system. All in all, this level's not too bad. It's actually not too long. There is a death route, like I said, for the green gem. There is a bonus level. There's a decent amount of boxes along the way. But overall, uh, Crash 3 doesn't really get too crazy difficult until some of the special levels, in my opinion. So you shouldn't have too many problems here. Now that we have the green gem from level 23, we can go back to level 21. This one is called Gone Tomorrow. We can get both of the clear gems. One is for completing the optional green gem path, and one is for collecting all of the boxes along the way, as it has been for the entirety of the game. Now this level is a lot trickier in my opinion than some of the previous levels. For example, here, after three bullets, you can shoot this guy with your new acquired skill, the bazooka, or you can just melee him, actually, which is the easier of the options. Now, there are a lot of little tricky hidden boxes in this level. There is a decent amount of backtracking as well. 
So you'll need to make sure you pay attention and, uh, you know, grab anything that might seem like it's out of the way. Uh, use the checkpoint system as shown in the video and you should be on your way to grabbing everything available in this level. And, uh, yep, more or less that's the uh, level for Gone Tomorrow.
With that out of the way, we are now at level 24, Mad Bombers. Mad Bombers is another plane level. We grab the crystal for defeating all five of the planes, and we grab the clear gem for destroying all of the boxes. For the planes, you have to destroy the left engine and the right engine to take the plane down, which might seem a little bit tricky because it's not immediately obvious by the mechanics of the game. Uh, just continually barrel roll in order to avoid as much damage as possible. Uh, I would recommend grabbing some of the planes and then focusing on boxes kind of in between. Again, all five planes gets you the crystal, all 11 boxes grabs you the gem, and you complete the level. Now, the last kind of normal level is level 25, Bug Light. This will allow us to face the final boss for the first time. And our first time through the level, there we can grab one of the two available gems. So, in order to grab the gem uh, that we're going to grab in this playthrough, we are going to collect all 121 of the available boxes. You may notice a blue gem path along the way. We will need to skip that and come back later. So there's also a pretty tricky section later on in this level where we need to do a bonus stage, but we're pretty limited on time because we have a little lightning bug with us. And that lightning bug uh, runs out pretty quick if you don't pay attention. So you might need to memorize a couple of platforms if you get stranded in the dark. If not, it's a bonus stage, so you can attempt it as many times as you need. You also, there's no death route or anything, so you can feel free to use checkpoints as often as you like. Just grab all the boxes and complete the level in order to get all of the crystals in the game. Uh, and then you can face the final boss for the first time.
With all 25 of the crystals, we can face Dr. Neo Cortex for the third and final time in the Insane Trilogy. Uh, the boss battle is incredibly easy in my opinion. I actually got it on my first try. What you'll need to do is dodge his, gr his uh, purple bullets whenever he does shoot them. He'll shoot them directly at you. So just pay attention to them and make sure you move left to right at the you know far edge of the screen away from him. Dodge the masks and then eventually he'll also throw some mines. After he throws the mines and they explode, he'll be in a state where you can spin into him and cause him to take damage. And then you can spin him into the middle in order to uh, take one out of the three bars of health away from him. Do this a total of three times and you defeat him and get the normal ending, which I will show. And then after that, I'll explain how to get the 105% ending. It again. This is not fair. Maybe I should retire to a nice big beach with a nice big drink and a woman with nice big bags of ice for my head. It's not over, Bandicoot. There are still the Zens. We still have a chance to triumph. <laughs> Now, after completing the game for the first time, we are now ready to go for levels 26 through 30. And to do that, you will need to grab all 25 relics in the in the original levels. They can be any rank, including Sapphire. Once you get 25 relics, you should have access to all 30 levels. And now we can start with level 26, which is Ski Crazed. This level is a Coco Jet Ski level. There's a hundred total boxes. Feel free to do the time trial whenever possible. We will need to actually grab all 30 of the time trials with gold on them in order to grab the final gem. So you might as well start early. And uh, yeah, just get through the level. Uh, the checkpoints are, you know, they're pretty, they, they happen pretty often. The level's not too hard in my opinion. As long as you're, you've gotten used to some of the jet ski controls and you take your time with some of the jumps, making sure the bombs aren't in the way. Uh, and you're good to go. Just finish off the level and uh, grab the gem for grabbing all 100 of the boxes.
Level number 27 is Hang 'em High, which this is the secret warp to that level. Uh, we grabbed the clear gem previously, and in this play, we're able to grab the yellow gem in literally like 60 seconds or less. So just run through the secret warp for the level. At the end, you'll find the yellow gem, finish off the level, and uh, just continue with the game. Next up, we have Area 51, level number 28, and since there are no crystals, we will get a gem for being first. We'll also get a gem for grabbing all the boxes along the way, and while you're at it, I would recommend going for the time trial as well. Again, we'll need all the time trials um, in order to get one of the last gems, so you might as well start your habit pretty early and try to grab the relics whenever possible. Uh, yeah. So, Era 51, all the boxes is a gem, finishing first is a gem, grab the time trial while you're here, and uh, this level's pretty fun, actually. It's on the longer end as well, though, so that could cause some people a couple of issues. As you can see, I actually made a mistake and still was able to finish with no problem. Next, we have level 29, Future Frenzy, with two gems, one for the boxes, one for the kind of optional path here. And uh, this one is a doozy and a half. It kind of involves a lot. So we're spawning at the secret warp area, which allows us access to some boxes we would previously not have access to. At the end of the kind of beginning area here, we will grab a gem for completing the secret warp area. And once we go back to the main level, we'll have to actually backtrack all the way to the organic beginning of the level. So there's, after this section, which is kind of a secret area, there is a whole, like, minute or two of backtracking all the way to the beginning of the level, uh, of the normal level. And then you have to, you know, backtrack all the way back to where you came from, which is at the end of this path. And then there's also a bonus level. There's a couple of tricky boxes along the way as well. So once you finish all that up, uh, after like six or seven minutes, you should grab both gems, all the boxes along the way, and finish up level 29 here.
Last but not least, level number 30, we have Rings of Power. Remember, if you want to do the time trial, I would recommend doing it on one of these two runs. You will grab a gem for getting first place, and you'll grab a gem for doing all of the boxes. Now, you can, if you want, attempt to do both of these in the same run. However, I found it to be very difficult to do so. So instead, I'm showing you one playthrough right now where I'm just aiming to be first, and then I do a second run where I take my time and grab all the boxes. Now, the trick to this one is to make sure you do a barrel roll as soon as you go through a gate. This will give you a giant speed boost through the level. Additionally, make sure that if you do have to turn on a dime, you do the quick turn. To do a quick turn, you have to turn and also hold the brake, which is the trigger on the left side. This will allow you to... Uh, you know lose some speed, but also allow you to, to turn much more sharply So the first run get first place get a gem the second run grab all the boxes and get a gem and that is the 30 levels, but we still have quite a few more gems to go With all of the colored gems out of the way now, and all 30 of the levels kind of completed at least one time, we are good to go back now to Bug Light. Now that we have all of the colored gems, we can take the blue path that starts about halfway through the level. If we can complete that path all the way through, we'll obviously need all the gems. So we'll need the blue gem, we'll need the purple and red and yellow and, and all the colors. Um, because as you play through the kind of secret path here, um, you'll need a gem to proceed all the way to the very end. You'll need all the gems to get to the end of the, the secret gem path. Uh, as you can see, I'm skipping all the boxes because we've already done that. And uh, again, at the very end of the secret gem path for all of the gems, you will find a clear gem and have both of the available gems in bug light.
All right, last but not least, out of the first 30 levels, we should only have two gems left, and those gems should be on the level Dynamite. We could have grabbed these actually a lot earlier in the game. However, uh, I left the secret levels for last, and one of the secret levels happens to be on this level. Um, so I decided to kind of put this level last, but Dynamite. In order to grab both of the gems, we'll need to grab all of the boxes for one of the gems, obviously. And we'll need to also complete the yellow gem path. So we'll have to do that, but we'll also have to kind of do a little bit of backtracking in order to make sure we grab all the boxes. So I'm actually going to go past this checkpoint, and you'll see the yellow platform here on my right. But I'm going to go quite a bit further into the level to grab some boxes, and then I'm going to backtrack to that platform. Complete the platform, complete the bonus area, and then complete the level grabbing all of the boxes, and I'll get a gem for completing the yellow optional path. I'll get a gem for grabbing all the boxes, and uh, then uh, we should have all of the gems in the first 30 levels.
All right, last but not least, to end off the video, I have both of the secret levels attained through secret exits. So the first secret exit is on the level Dynamite. What we'll want to do is quickly proceed through the level and take the yellow gem path. Now, as we're going through the path, we will come to an area where we start running into the screen and there will be some pterodactyls. We'll want to skip the first pterodactyl and then run directly into the second pterodactyl. And instead of killing us, he'll actually lift us up and bring us to this secret level, which is called Agapis Rex. And I'll show you that in a second here. So right here we get snatched up by the second pterodactyl on purpose. We unlock an achievement or trophy for getting carried away and finding the secret level. The secret level is called Agapis Rex. I would recommend grabbing the time trial while you're here, getting the gem for grabbing, um, for completing the level basically and, and getting the time trial. So that's how you can get Agapis Rex done. You can get the gem here in the secret level and you are good to go and move on to the last secret level. Now the other secret level is called Hot Coco and we can access it through the level Road Crash. So pretty early on in the level, on the left hand side of the road, you should notice a sign and that sign will have a alien skull icon on it. And what we'll need to do is drive straight into the sign in order to access the secret level, Hot Coco. Doing it for the first time will unlock an achievement or trophy as well. And we'll need to do that level in order to get uh, our 44th gem as well. Alright, so the secret level Hot Coco, it has a ton of boxes. It's pretty tricky, although it has a decent amount of checkpoints. The way the level works is that the beginning is also the end, so you'll need to go out into the level, grab all the boxes, and then come back. Grabbing all the boxes will get us that gem again. There are some really tricky boxes as well. There's some really tricky jumps. We'll need to make sure we don't die. We'll need to make sure we can use the checkpoints to our best abilities. We'll need to grab all of the uh, kind of nitro boxes as well. There's also some boxes that are available underwater. And to grab a box that's underwater, you need to jump off of a ramp and hold forward on the left stick. This will do a trick where you dive into the water after, at the end of your, your jump. So you'll need to do that and grab the boxes underwater as well. I'll show you that pretty obviously. And uh, yeah, just use the checkpoints, grab all the boxes, return to the beginning area to grab the gem and exit the level. And we are basically done. One more thing to do if we want to grab all uh, 45 gems and get 105%.
Now, the 45th and final gem is a clear gem that is acquired by getting all 30 of the available gold relics in the game. You can get gold or platinum, obviously, but not sapphire. Upon getting all 30 of the gold relics, you'll go back to the main area and a gem will spawn and you can pick it up. And at that point, you can get the 105% ending. The 45 gem ending you'll see on screen right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please drop a like, share it with a friend. That would be incredible. Obviously, you can imagine a two hour video took quite a long time to complete. Thank you so much for taking some time with me. Enjoy the 105% ending. And a special thanks to all the amazing people on Patreon who do help support the show. I'll see you in a future video. Peace. No, it cannot be. Not a prisoner of time again. The time twister machine could not hold itself together. We were lucky to escape. Give me the mask. With you, I shall take over the world. Come on. It is difficult to say what has happened to our enemies, but I doubt we will see them for a long time.